to talk about orphans. Well, Osama bin Laden has just created hundreds and hundreds of orphans. And there needs to be an outcry among the Muslim population in this country, in addition to the Muslim population outside, to start a campaign against Mr. bin Laden because he is acting totally un-Islamic. Now, what gives, what gives rise to this, this ability of his and of others to awaken these passionate feelings and to convince at least some, some thousands from all we know, that this is a legitimate interpretation of the Quran and that this is and that this is and that they are serving their God. Well, as I said, that's why that's why they uh, it, it's important to understand these people have taken Islam hostage. OK, and that's why it's it, it's very, very important to make sure that there is this concerted campaign. Now, to answer your question, the reason why he has these followers is because for the most part, they're uneducated. And it really boils down to education, for the most part, for the most part. In addition to that, it's the interpretations of Mr. bin Laden that don't have any answer. For example, we know that two of the suspects are from the UAE. Well, the United, UAE, Arab, Emirates. United Arab Emirates, absolutely. The per capita income in the United Arab Emirates is $23,000. These are rich people, and yet they seem to have been involved in this incident. Why? Because no one has filled the void. No one has tried to free Islam from its captivity. And that's why I'm saying before the United States strikes, it is absolutely imperative that we dehumanize Osama bin Laden, that we start a massive concerted psychological campaign against Islamic fanatics. Now, one of the things that has struck at least some observers in this country is where you know, many thousands of Arabs, many thousands of Muslims live, is what they consider to be not an approval of what happened by those people, but a certain silence, a certain hunkered down yeah, attitude, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that there has not been a a an outcry, a, a seeming joining in this surge and this wave of patriotic sentiment uh, that has swept across the country. That may be an unfair characterization, but is there something to that? Um, uh, I, I take my cue Brit, from the total silence, total silence of the supreme religious leader of Iran. You know, the administration has said, well, Mr. Khatami has expressed his condolences. But the fact of the matter is that Mr. Khatami is not running Iran. The supreme religious leader of Iran runs Iran, and he has remained silent. And in fact, when the people of Iran tried to hold a candlelight vigil, they were uh, immediately uh, put to prison by the authorities inside the country. But, but that's in Iran. What about here in the United in, States? In, in here, that's why it is absolutely imperative that we all as Americans ask that the Arab Americans, that Muslim Americans come to bat, play their patriotic duty at this time of crisis. They need to express the true faith of Islam, but directly address to Mr. bin Laden and the other fanatics. This is the time to decide, are you American first or are you Muslim? Well, if you, but for, if what you say is correct though, being, uh, being Muslim uh, is in no way at war with being an American, that the values that we're talking about that are in play here are basically shared by Muslims, and that, and that, that, there's, that, that one would imagine that Muslims would be called to express outrage at this and to join in the this, in this sort of the, the patriotic spirit that, that is sweeping this country. I think they have. I think they have. I, I mean, you see many, many Muslims who've expressed the sadness, and there are many, many instances of uh, sadness about this. Right. Having I, I said that, no, no, absolutely, absolutely, I understand. But having said that, having said that, I think it's the patriotic duty of Arab Americans, and especially their religious leaders, to address Mr. bin Laden directly. They have never done that. No one in the Muslim community in this country or in the Arab community has attacked him. As a, exactly, has attacked him directly, personally. Mr. Bin Laden, according to the verses of the Quran, you are an, uh, an infidel. Mr. Bin Laden or Mr. Khamenei, Supreme Religious Leader, you are not a Muslim for this, this, this reason. That has never happened. It is time for the Arab American community, for the Muslims in this country, to start addressing this issue, in addition to expressing their condolences. Do you hear this, do you think this call is likely to be echoed in mosques across America? I doubt it very much, but I think the government in the United States 
needs to go to the individual leaders of the Muslim community, organize them, and start a massive PR campaign via radio, television, into the Arab world. Is it a sense of solidarity with fellow Muslims, uh, even infidel Muslims, that you think engenders this reluctance? Um, you know, the Quran says very precisely that Jews, Christians, are people of the book. When, you, when they talk about infidels, when Osama bin Laden talks about infidels, it doesn't exist in the Quran. Infidel refers to people who are not of the book. In other words, atheists. I See, that is the clear, that's the definition of an infidel in the Quran. This does not mean Jews or Christians. Rob Sabani, nice to have you. Thank Absolutely, you my pleasure. Very interesting interview. My, Thank you, my sir. pleasure.